BMW is busy unrolling the spanking new R1300 GS out to dealers, where happy customers can enjoy Bavarian's latest in big adventure glory. This is very exciting, but it also means we say a sad goodbye to this, the R1250 GS. It's an old friend of ours, most notably when the adventure version took me 801 kilometers to Uppington, where I took one selfie, turned around, and rode 801 kilometers back again, thereby completing the famous iron butt run of 1600 kilometers in 24 hours. For the 1250, it was a doddle. It could travel comfortably and easily at pretty much any speed. And I was tired when I got home in the wee hours of the morning, but I wasn't cramped or stiff or anything. If anything, it was fun. This 1250 is not the adventure model though. This specific one is the latest Trophy Edition, named after the famous International GS Trophy that South African teams keep winning. That means you get this fancy blue and white with a touch of red paint job. You also get special frame protectors, spiky enduro foot pegs, radiator covers and the rest of the world will be amazed at the spoked wheels. Except that all South African GSs arrive with spoked wheels because we are hardcore like that. Like all big GS models, the 1250 has a boxer twin motor that more recently is both air and liquid cooled. It pushes 136 horsepower, but that's not the headline. It also punches out 143 newton meters of torque. But it's not so much the amount of torque, but rather where it delivers it, which seems to be everywhere. The torque of this motorcycle is, it reminds me of an electric bike. Now electric bikes, I mean, all people scoff all this and that. Um, and I know they, got, they don't make any noise and they're a bit of a nerdy science experiment. But to ride, they are so exciting. When you get past all of that, just the pure riding, the feel of riding, you open the throttle and just there's 100% torque immediately and you won't believe how that feels. Same sort of thing happens with this. It's like the torque curve is just a straight line, the horsepower is just a straight line. So from like one RPM, it feels like you've got all the torque on hand. And there's lots of it. And if you don't believe me, um, just notice I'm not riding, I'm not pulling the throttle at all. This bike is idling in sixth gear at 42 kilometers per hour. Look there, you can see on the screen, the uh, cruise control is not on. <laughs> this is lovely. Sunday cruise. And the 1300 GS is going to have even more of this talkiness. I'm convinced that the 1300 won't move forward when you open the throttle. It'll just roll up the road behind you like a cartoon. Naturally, as is the way with all top-of-the-range adventure motorcycles, the GS Trophy comes with all the electronics. It's a very long list, ranging from a quick shifter to heated passenger seats. But my favorite is when you go off-road and need to do something important. One thing I do like about the GS is that instead of going through a million menus to switch the traction control off, you hold down one button and there we go, it's off. And then you just kind of wheel spin everywhere. Oh, ooh, there's that talk. There's that talk. Saying the dirt, oh yeah, you think you got traction? You don't have traction. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> the KTM's angry and more powerful, but. The GS, you can just do it all day. It's so easy. Oh, oh, oh. I want to do it all day. The 1250GS has a front surface area that matches that of a cruise liner. It's a big motorcycle, yet once you're on the move, it somehow becomes light and nimble. Most of that is down to the boxer motor, which means that the weight is all famously low. Although, if the 1250 already wheel spins for nothing in the dirt, people might immediately begin asking the question, why is BMW going even bigger with the 1300? This is the sort of question that has been asked for many years. Bikes are getting bigger. It's kind of funny when my dad, my dad was telling me a story in the 80s. He went on, I think it was the R100 GS launch, world launch. And he had all the sort of journalists there at the sort of press conference. And he sort of said, and he said, and he put his hand up, asked the question. He said, so 
you guys are now making the bike bigger. It's now 100 cc. Why don't you just make it like a 1200 cc with lots more power? And it was sort of scoff like, why would you need bigger and more power than that? Ah, you know, 1000 cc. My forgive me. Why would you need more than 1000 cc? <gasps> Shock and horror. We're all very glad that they came to their senses. Anyway, back to the 1250 and what it truly is. This sort of embodies the kind of modern day adventure bike principle where it's one bike does everything. This can be a sports bike, it, even though it's size and handles nicely enough, it's got enough sort of power, not top end, it won't be the super bike, but it's got enough to keep you entertained. It's a great commuter, it's very easy to ride. It can be a fast bike if you need it to be, it can go off road. It, 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 there, it could do pretty much bits of everything. It's also a very easy bike to ride. Extremely easy. Anyone can ride this bike. Anyone. I mean, provided you've got long enough legs and you're strong enough to hold it up. If you can do that, you can ride it. Easily. But then the 1300 will most likely be even better at being everything than the 1250. So it's not that that we will miss. What we will miss though, is a certain element of geniusness. It kind of makes me sad because this is kind of the last of the GS that looks like a GS and I mean okay not going right back the early GS's were just round headlights and sort of things they look like modern day sort of retro scramblers I'm talking the GS that look like the GS going all the way back from kind of the 1100 GS in 1995 um, yeah that that sort of look you know when they sort of moved to that look the sort of more full body adventure bike look this is the last one that looks like that, because the 1300 doesn't look like that. It, it's sort of changed. If you ask me, it looks a bit more like a Honda, like it's got its styling cues from Honda. That's just my opinion. But it, it doesn't have that same sort of GS look it's carried since 1995. And it's not a bad thing. The 1300 looks great, but it's a bit like the sort of Porsche 911 kind of saying, well, well, Porsche taking the 911 and saying, well, they've kind of got their styling cues from Lamborghini and changed it. It's not a bad thing, it'll look terrific, but it's kind of sad that that sort of look is over. But that's saying goodbye to 30 years of a sort of look. There's another reason why I'll always be fond of the 1250 specifically, though. I guess sort of a personal reason why I'm, kind of, I'm sad to see this bike go. Although I'm excited to see the 1300, I bet it'll be pretty awesome. But me personally why I'm sad is because I've always sort of I've always pre much preferred the 990 the KTM you know the KTM adventure bike there the 990 1190 1290 I don't know 1990 eventually but anyway just because I've always been I've been into road racing I race super bikes and that bike just suited me why wouldn't you want a bike that's ridiculously fast that you need 200 plenty on a dirt road that thrills you that much why wouldn't you want that and I kind of always understood why people buy GSs instead of KTMs, but it was sort of scoffable. It was like, oh, okay, all right, fine, go buy your GS. Now, the 1250 is really the first one I've ridden where if I, you know, I, okay, I'd still rather have a 1290, that's me personally, but if I saw someone on a 1250, I would go, yeah, yeah, good job, well done, good, you know, I'm for it, that's a cool bike, yeah, you made a good decision. Uh, well, there's no kind of internal scoffing at all. It's just because this is that much fun. They've added that fun element. I'm sure the people in Munich are celebrating the final approval of a fat ginger journalist from South Africa. But anyway, so this is the last hurrah for the 1250. And it isn't a bad hurrah either. If you want a trophy edition, it'll set you back 343,300 Rand. Although I would hurry, there might not be many left.